Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the VAC Station 3100, which was a very popular line of graphical workstations produced from the late 80s into the early 90s. The 3100, I think, came out in about 1989. There were three main models produced. There was the Model 30, which is this one, the first one, and then later on came the Model 38, and then the Model 76. The 30 was rated at about 2.8 VUPS, um, the 38 was 3.8, and the 76 was 7.6, so the 76 was double the speed of the 38. The 38 had a SCSI floppy instead of a normal floppy, and the 76 um, had two SCSI buses in it and different memory architecture. There were some other varieties produced. Uh, there was a Model 40, which was the same as the 30, and the 48, which was the same as the 38. The only difference was the cabinet was higher, so you could fit full height hard drives in them. The 3100 is a popular machine with hobbyists because of its size and low power usage and the fact that you can use just about any SCSI 2 hard drive in them. You don't need to use the original digital drives. Today we're going to concentrate on, on this one, the Model 30, um, as my Model 38 is currently not functioning and the 76 is quite different inside, so we'll stick with the good old original. Okay, let's have a look at the connections on the back. Uh, starting from the left, uh, this is the thick wire Ethernet, the AUI connection, and the thin wire connection for the Ethernet, and there's a little switch in there that switches between the two. Uh, this is the reset button, it takes you to the console prompt. Um, that is the keyboard connector for when you're using it as a workstation and mouse. And this is the video out for the monitor. The printer port also doubles up as a console port. And this is just a standard serial port. These are the diagnostic LEDs that show um, the startup procedure in case you can't see anything on the screen. And the normal power inputs, of course, and power switch. Under here is a SCSI connector so that you can connect external SCSI devices and you lift this off. There is a terminator in there that you can remove and there's your SCSI connector which is a digital proprietary connector. Um, this cable is what you need to connect it and goes to the standard Centronics. Okay, time to take the cover off. There's only two screws in the back, here and here, and the cover will slide off. Inside it's a layered construction. You've got the disk drive board on top with your hard drives, your floppy, your disk controller. Underneath that you'll have a graphics card generally and the memory card and then underneath that you've got the system board. Power supply on the left here which is a modular sort of supply. You can undo a few screws and the whole thing will just lift out. Uh, same with these boards, there's various screws to undo and then the whole board will come out. Notice how there's little cutouts in various places on the case for where you put the screwdriver through. As I noted before, these are standard SCSI 2 hard drives. Uh, these are genuine digital ones, even though they're manufactured by someone else. Um, they are badged as digital as well. You can put any hard drives in here that you like, as long as they're the SCSI 2 style drive. Uh, the only thing that you've got to watch out for is that the system disk, the one that you boot off, has to be one gigabyte or less. Um, if it's more than a gig, you'll have all sorts of troubles. So this one here, the RZ26, is a one gig drive, so that's the largest that can be the system disk. Disks for data can be any size you like, it doesn't matter. The screws holding down this plate are all sprung, so they won't come out, which is nice. This particular machine has the flat cables for the SCSI. Um, some of them just have open wire cables, 
Uh, the Model 38 has that. This floppy is a standard floppy, just hooks into to the standard interface on there. It's not SCSI. The only thing you've got to watch for when you pull this board out is you have to undo this connector at the back. And once you've done that, this board should slide out. All your discs are on this tray. Um, there are mounts for the discs under here. There's rubber grommets for shock absorption. This machine's missing the graphics card. Normally it plugs in here and it will take up all that area. Um, so this one's only got monochrome graphics because it's missing the colour graphics cards. This is the memory board. The machine's got four megabytes of onboard memory, which is these two rows, one, two, three, four, I suppose. And then this makes up the remainder. This is a 16 meg machine, so this will be 12. This is two boards sandwiched together, so there's a four and an eight. To pull this out, there's some connectors here, and you just have to wiggle it up from either side and undo these clips. Okay, so it's unclipped now. Pull that out. See the two memory boards there. And they're sandwiched together with a connector. Okay, I've separated the boards now. So this will be 4 meg memory board. And this is the 8 meg one. Notice these have 9 chips for each megabyte, so there's obviously parity on these boards. Okay, time to put the drive plate back in. This plate's easy compared to some of the other models. I think the 38 is a cutout there that you have to slide that through, but this one doesn't need it. And the power for the drives is a connector there. It's separate to the the main that's the main board board power and this is the power for the hard drives that tucks down in there just for a comparison i thought i'd show you inside the model 38 uh, the hard drives are facing a different direction in this one whereas the model 30 they were that way uh, this is using the the um, individual wired cables instead of the ribbon cable the SCSI board is a lot smaller. Since it only has to do SCSI, it doesn't have to do the floppy. And under the floppy, there is a converter board that converts from the floppy format to SCSI. So this, this floppy drive appears as a SCSI device, even though it's not actually a SCSI device. Also note I'm using non-standard drives here, they're non-digital, but they work fine. Time to fire this thing up. Well, first I'll put a um, Ethernet terminator on the back just so it doesn't get errors on the on the network interface. This is an AUI terminator if you're using AUI, but the thin wire ones are a lot easier to come by. Okay, A42A is the model 30. The 38 is KA42B and the 76 is KA43. B is the memory test, it takes a while. It's prompting for boot, I'll just stop that. This screen is showing the bootable devices. Um, Ethernet, because you can boot over the network. That's the floppy drive, DUA2, it's an RX23. And then you've got two SCSI hard drives on one and three. It's a one gig for the first one, so that it keeps under that one gig limit. It's an RZ26L, which is an official deck part, so that's why it puts that there. And the other one's the, a larger drive. Look at the memory, there's a one there, so it's 16 meg.
So it's all looking good. Uh, before I go, there's one thing I might show off, and that is using floppies. You don't often see this. So these aren't DOS format floppies, they're VMS format floppies. So if you look at DUA2, which is the floppy drive, that's better. And then you can have a look at it. And when you're finished, you've got to dismount it. Otherwise it gets upset. These are 1.44 meg floppies. You can see from the size, 2880, which is the number of 512 byte blocks. So half of that's 1440. And that's it for this episode. In the next episode, I'm going to install VMS on it, but with a twist. I'm going to do it the old-fashioned way. See you then.